They've come from the far corners of Africa to celebrate their epic achievement and select the best of them all. The 2017 All Africa Business Leader Awards in partnership with CNBC Africa celebrate the great dreamers and captains of business from across the continent. Marking the seventh anniversary of honoring outstanding achievement across the continent, the 2017 ABLA crowns the All Africa winners tonight. Distinguished guests, good evening and welcome to the 2017 All Africa Finale of the All Africa Business Leader Awards in partnership with CNBC Africa. I am Fifi Peters and it is my pleasure to host this seventh annual ABLA. Good evening, bonsoir, habari za jioni, boa noit, uh, and saubona. I'm Alexander Leipner, and a warm welcome from the Santon Convention Center in Johannesburg, South Africa, for African Business's Biggest Night Out. At this point, I'd like to welcome our Vice Chairman of the ABN Group, Mr. Rakesh Wahi, our Managing Director of the ABN Group, Mrs. Roberta Naika, Premier of Gauteng, Mr. David Makura. Welcome to all our All Africa Judging Committee members for 2017, the members of the ABN Board, our ABLA finalists, fellow members of the media, and of course, you, our VIP guests. Tonight, we celebrate those business leaders who have made a distinctive contribution in their respective sectors by demonstrating accountability, best practice, integrity, and innovation on the continent. We are gathered here on this momentous occasion to salute the pioneers and game changers in the African business community. For those of you who are active on social media, Please share your experience tonight on social media using the hashtag ABLA2017. So seven years ago and seven years on, the ABLA continued to be supported by leading financial media brands CNBC Africa and Forbes Africa, along with the African Independent in highlighting some of Africa's most successful businesses and business leaders. Speaking of which, it now gives me great pleasure to welcome on stage the co-founder and vice chairman of the ABN Group, Mr. Rakesh Wahi, who will take up the podium shortly. Now, Mr. Wahi founded the ABLA back in 2011 as a tribute to those captains of industry who have made a significant difference, both qualitative and quantitative, in their companies, industries, and the communities that they serve. He believes that great business leaders are ordinary men and women who have taken extraordinary decisions in the face of challenges and adversity to bring glory to their organizations and to the people which they lead. So without further ado, please give a warm round of applause for Mr. Rakesh Wahi. Ladies and gentlemen, as we complete another challenging year in our journey as Africa's leading business media conglomerate, I'd like to reflect on the year that has gone by. While we in South Africa will remember it for the unveiling of a large number of indiscretions, we must not forget to celebrate those leaders, many of whom are present in the room tonight, 
led by our respected Premier, these leaders have fought to bring hope and thereby setting our nation on a path of governance, accountability, and recovery. Like a lot of you in the room today, I feel proud to be in Kauteng, not just because the province is the economic powerhouse of this continent, but also because of the strong political leadership. Premier Makura, you have led from the front, giving business the necessary hope for a brighter future. Over the last year alone, you have been on an international roadshow to North and South America, Europe, Asia, and numerous African countries to place the right perspective before the international community. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a moment to applaud all those who have stood up to defend the institutions of governance that have provided hope to the people of this great country. <clears throat> South Africa, however, is not isolated in this struggle. Africa has witnessed similar trends in Kenya, in Nigeria, the two countries that have also been at economic standstill owing to political uncertainty. As business, whether it's big or small, we cannot progress, create employment, and provide economic growth if there is no political stability or if our leaders lose sight of their objectives. This is our number one challenge in business today. Investors like myself look for two values in emerging markets, continuity and consistency of policy. We don't need much more than that to make things work. Capital finds good projects, and Africa has an abundance of projects. There is a great workforce, and governments need to focus on training and equipping its youth for the future. Three years back, I had initiated an annual debate on capacity building and on leadership. This resulted in our first summit on education that took place yesterday. To my mind, over the next 20 years, education across primary, secondary, vocation, and tertiary has to be the greatest focus on the continent. Yesterday, we had some interesting discussions on roles and responsibilities, direction, strategy, policy, and financing. With the right legislative framework and engagement from the private sector, we will see the necessary development of human capacity on the continent. This will better prepare us for the fourth industrial revolution. And as I had mentioned yesterday in the conference, that government needs to act as a catalyst and an enabler. They don't have to fund everything. As business leaders, we need to define our individual mantras that distinguish, distinguish us from our peers and enable us to excel in an ever-changing and dynamic political and business environment. We must continue our progress by embracing indigenization of man, material, and capital. We must recognize that our businesses are going through a world of disruption. This calls for innovation in processes and technology so that we're investing into the future and not into the past. So it's been seven years since the ABLA first came to life on the African continent, celebrating business giants, and everyone nominated here tonight joins the ABLA alumni of catalysts and pioneers. And looking back, it's been seven years, 25 events, four countries, six cities, and close to 5,500 5, guests, with countless leaders joining and alumni of ABLA winners. So let's take a minute to look back at some All Africa Business Leader Awards moments of yesteryear. A winner is not the one who walks away with the award this evening, but every one of us playing a part in Africa's success story.
extremely grateful and humbled by this. But education is the cornerstone of our future. Recognition is a very powerful motivation. There's no reason not to be competitive. We've got a simple mantra, it's rest is rust. Please don't give up. This is the positive narrative that you're talking about. All Africa Business Leader Awards. I may be alone accepting this award at this very moment, but I stand here representing the team of DNA All-Stars. You only shine as a leader if you've got the right people around you. A huge reward in, in starting an entrepreneurial venture, particularly one that provides real purpose. Now you have been challenged. Having come this far and won this award, it means you can only go up and not go down. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me great pleasure to welcome the Honorable Premier of Gauteng, Mr. David Makura, to deliver tonight's keynote address. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the year when we come together to celebrate Africa's business excellence. We are here to honor the serial entrepreneurs of our continent, the innovators, the disruptors, and the game changers. Fellow Africans, tonight we honor Africa's dreamers who are living their dreams for what is the meaning and purpose of life if you don't have a dream. Without a dream, life has no purpose. And life is indeed lifeless without a vision. I would like to quote the former president of Liberia, Ellen jo Johnson Sirleaf, for saying the following about dreams. And I quote, the size of your dreams must always exceed your current capacity to achieve them. For if your dreams don't scare you, they are not big enough. The APLA finale belongs to African business leaders who are driven by big dreams and that profound sense of passion to succeed against all odds. And this is the dream and passion to see Africa emerge as a respected partner and player in global business affairs. And it is the dream to place our continent at the cutting edge of the fourth industrial revolution, ensuring that Africa is not left behind this time round. This is the dream of an Africa that is free from the constraints and legacy of our colonial past as well as the disastrous failures of post-colonial African states. This is the dream of an Africa that utilizes its natural resources and harnesses the creative energy of its youthful population to solve its challenges and deal with global problems faced by humanity at large, such as poverty, inequality, unemployment, the effects of climate change, rapid urbanization, migration, as well as the, the persistent problem of peace and security. Yesterday, we participated in the Summit on the Future of Education, in which we were envisioning the future of Africa in a world driven by the imperatives of the Fourth Industrial Revolution and the knowledge economy. We did so because our continent's full development potential can only be realized if African leaders, both in government, in business, and in civil society, accept the need to change the way we think. 
We as African leaders have to dream and dream big. We also have to work and simultaneously work hard to ensure that we invest in Africa's people, especially its youth. Our dream is that of an Africa which has governments and leaders who uphold and promote good governance. It is a dream of an Africa that encourages enterprise and promotes entrepreneurship. It's a dream of an Africa that embraces innovation and invests in infrastructure to support industrialization. So we want an Africa in which governments and business leaders are accountable to citizens and transparent in the conduct of both state and business affairs. This is a very different Africa. We at this level of government, regional governments and city governments have a lot to contribute about pursuing the African dream. We do all these things inspired by the achievements and the efforts of our African entrepreneurs, innovators and disruptors who work so hard to showcase as will be seen here today, that Africa cannot be left behind. In conclusion, I want to congratulate Mr. Rakesh Wahi for his vision and passion for Africa. He is a true African as defined by Kwame Nkrumah, who said to be African, you don't have to be born in Africa. Africa must be born in you. Mr. Wahi, Africa is born in you. And I would like to wish all the nominees and winners of the 2017 All Africa Business Leaders Awards well. God bless you. Merci. Asante sana. Now, no award would have the right tone or credibility without a sound judging process. And at this point, I want to take a moment to thank our judging panel who have spent tremendous hours selecting and debating tonight's winners. We thank you all for your efforts. Let's take a look back at the judges' journey for 2017. The journey to award the All Africa Business Leader Awards winners is a lengthy, rewarding task for the judges selected to oversee the process. Nominees are adjudicated against strenuous criteria to ensure that Africa's finest entrepreneurs, innovators and business leaders are selected to represent their respective categories. The 2017 All Africa Business Leader Awards is made possible by an esteemed panel of judges. Chris Bishop, Head of Programming, CNBC Africa, the former Managing Editor of Forbes Africa Magazine and Chairman of the Abla Judges Panel. Well, uh, I have to um, oversee the discussions that go towards the, the signing of the Abla Award winner. Frederick van der Feyfer, Executive Director, West Africa, the ABN Group. Bismarck Rewane, Managing Director and CEO of Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Jonathan Foster Pedley, Dean and Director at Henley Business School. I think what makes a good judge, judging panel is three things. The first is they need to be fair. Second thing, they've got to be informed and diverse. Third thing is I think they should argue. Francis Kamulegia, country senior partner of PwC Uganda. Auditing partners, Grant Thornton, and research partner, Henley Business School. Thank you to the All Africa Business Leader Awards 2017 judges and partners.
We've assembled here tonight to applaud Africa's business leaders who have displayed boldness and rare character over a striking period of time. And at this point, let me commend all our finalists for having made it this far, and we eagerly await the announcement of the winners in each eminent category. Having said that, let us begin with our first ABLA category this evening. Now, there are three dynamic, hardworking, and dedicated women nominated in our first category this evening. And uh, let's take a look at a message from our sponsor and finalist for the 2017 All Africa Businesswoman of the Year, presented by Wipold. Business Women of the Year category, we're looking obviously for women who are doing well, who are working hard and where it then shows in, 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 in their businesses, in the impact they're having in their companies and within society. So we're looking for resilience and we're looking for someone that other women and business people in general can look up to as a role model. Finalist for the 2017 Businesswoman of the Year, Yolisa Pache, CEO Mnet, Oluwatoin Sony, Group CEO, United Capital Group, Fatma Riyami Diwani, Managing Director, Nature Ripe Kilimanjaro. winner of the All Africa 2017 Business Woman of the Year is, drum roll, Oluwatonin Sanin, who is the group CEO of United Capital. Mrs. Olua Toinsoni is the Group CEO at United Capital PLC. She has over 25 years experience in investor services, law and finance. She has played leading roles in landmark deals such as the multi-trillion Naira Amcon bond issues, the Lagos State Bond programs, the Lafarge WAPCO, UPDC and Flower Mills debt issues amongst many others. She is the author of Yes, You Too Can, an inspirational book aimed to empower the next generation of women leaders. Um, it is indeed an honor to accept the award of the Business Woman of the Year Africa. And I thank the ABLA Award Organization. I thank CNBC Africa, Forbes Africa. I appreciate um, the panel of judges. And I must thank the people at United Capital, our trusting shareholders, loyal customers, supportive board, and very hardworking staff who join us in our mission of transforming Africa by providing innovative investment banking solutions for African governments, companies, and individuals. I must thank my tremendous support system, um, the leader of whom is my husband, Shegun Sonny, who is here with me tonight. And I thank our children. I thank our children who have been understanding over the years I have, as I have embarked on the journey that I have embarked on. And I thank the almighty God for choosing me and for the grace that he has put upon my life. I thank God for the rough paths I have had to walk because it has built resilience and built character. And I thank you all for being here and for honoring me in this way. I commit to continue on this race 
um, which is to make an impact and to make a difference so that our children can have a better Africa. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight, we celebrate that undeniable inspiration and vigor that comes with the category All Africa Young Business Leader of the Year. Let's take a look at the finalists of the 2017 All Africa Young Business Leader of the Year presented by Lancaster University and Transnational Academic Group. The finalists for the 2017 Young Business Leader of the Year. Sylvester Chauke, Founder and Chief Architect, DNA Brand Architects. Aloysius Atta, Co-Founder and CEO, Farmerline. Jennifer Bash, CEO, Alaska Tanzania Industries. probably going to be a billionaire of tomorrow. The Young Business Leader of the Year 2017 is Mr. Aloysius Atta, CEO of Farmline from Ghana. Aloysius Atta is the CEO and co-founder of Farmline. In 2013, Atta and his partner launched Farmline in order to support small-scale farmers. A voice service and SMS platform to provide farmers with improved access to information to make informed decisions. The initiative has received the attention of a number of international awards. Today, the company has reached over 200,000 farmers across five countries in Africa. Thank you, everyone. I'm Stephen Quay. I'm here on the behalf of uh, Aloysius. He couldn't be here, he's in Ghana, but he asked me to pick up this prize. 90% um, of Africa is probably at the base of the pyramid. This, roughly the same number is in agriculture and value chains. And trapped in poverty, uh, the Africans trapped in poverty, there is an information gap. This information gap is being solved by Farmerline, which tries to address the imbalances in uh, information. So um, I just wanted to thank Aloysius for making us proud, uh, for choosing the hard road, but also the worthwhile road. Thank you. the All Africa Innovator of the Year shines a light on companies who have created new product services or programs that have had a positive effect on their business, industry, or the community. And let's take a look at the finalists for the 2017 All Africa Innovator of the Year. The finalists for the 2017 Innovator of the Year James Steer, co-founder, I Drop Water. Godfrey Magila, founder and CEO, Magila Tech Co. And the winner for the 2017 All African Business Leaders Awards Innovator of the Year is James Steer, co-founder, I Drop Water. Founded by husband and wife team James Steer and Kate Tier Steer, iDrop installs innovative purification and dispensing units at point of sale. Shoppers refill water containers, which means the plastic waste is reduced and up to 80% cheaper than bottled water. The water supply comes at little to no cost to the retailers and iDrop monitors the units remotely to keep maintenance costs low. Revenue is split with grocery stores. For every dollar made, a shop owner makes the same, which drives economic activity 
in communities. Ladies and gentlemen, um, it would be an understatement to say that I am absolutely dumbstruck uh, by this award and this recognition. Um, my thanks to everyone here, uh, to the sponsors, Mr. Premier, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're a small business uh, that set out two and a bit years ago to transform one of the biggest industries in the world, being drinking water. Um, right now, two billion people around the world still drink unsafe water. And as a result, uh, in the minute or two that I'm going to speak to you, another two people are going to die uh, as a result. Um, the business response, in our opinion, has been completely inadequate. And this is what prompted my wife and I, uh, a couple of years ago, to leave our jobs and kind of invest our life savings to found this business, uh, to tackle this challenge. This recognition is extraordinary. Uh, and, and as I say, completely unexpected. Um, so we are incredibly proud. I'm mean, proud of what we've achieved. Um, and to be surrounded by this illustrious company is, is really something quite extraordinary. Um, I have to say that uh, it's been wonderful to hear these presentations and discussions about some of the critical needs uh, in business and society in general around Africa and around the world. Um, something I'd like to really stress, um, we've spoke, it's been mentioned, the importance of education. Um, I'd like to, and again, apologies if this is a bit clumsy in its presentation, but as a businessman in this room, I'd like to challenge all other businessmen to look for opportunities to elevate the role of women in business. I very proudly work for my wife. <laughs> who, who is on every measure way smarter than I am and way better at this. Uh, the way we describe this business is that um, without her, this is a really great idea and it's a wonderful innovation. With her, it's a really powerful business. Mm. Um, so I'd like to dedicate this award to Kate over there. Um, and just say thank you so much to everyone here. This is an extraordinary honor. Thank you very much. The All Africa Industrialist of the Year, presented by the IDC, represents businesses that have participated in the beneficiation of raw material, manufacturing, and enriching infrastructure. And there is no doubt that this category, category is an employment creator, an economic growth contributor, and forms a cornerstone for the future of African business. Let's take a look at a message from our category sponsor and review the finalists for the 2017 All Africa Industrialist of the Year presented by the IDC. IDC is a development finance institution. So what we do is we fund projects, we fund companies that have come to us for funding, either to expand their businesses or to start new ones, or individuals or entrepreneurs that do that, both in South Africa and the rest of the African continent. IDC has chosen to sponsor the industrialist category because we want to recognize those industrialists who have seen opportunities, who have taken that risk. Finalists for the 2017 Industrialist of the Year General Tembinko Simtembu Founder Mtembu Tissue Converter Jean Dedeu Kagabo CEO Soft Group All Africa Business Leaders Awards Industrialist of the Year is General Mutembi, founder of Mutembi Tissue Converting.
Tembim Kosim Tembu, founder of Mtembu Tissue Converting, worked his way up from the factory floor to management and bought the business that retrenched him. He turned it into a profit-making magnet. The company's growth has been exceptional from the original component of 40 full-time and 15 part-time workers. Mtembu now employs 104 people and produces between 7 and 800 tons of toilet paper a month, double the company's original output in 2005. Mtembu's Cloud9 brand is now sold in major supermarket groups. I'd like to thank the South African government, especially IDC, because without the support of IDC and the seriousness of IDC in making sure that our country becomes strong, we create employment, because Without industrialists, we have no future. I must say, <clears throat> our company is a small company. It started 12 years ago with 37 people employed. Today, we employ 103 people. Mm. Yes, it is tough. As we all know, that um, the past, it has a serious impact on us in making sure that we have an impact in our economy, we participate in our economy, we stop looking for tenders, we create a better future by making sure that we create jobs, by making sure that our companies become strong. I'm hoping that my dream will become a reality that in 2025, I would love to see MTC, which is Mtembu Tissue Converting, become a billionaire turnover, billion turnover business. Now, we are at the stage right now where we are down to the final four awards for the evening. And as the following nominees know all too well, perseverance pays. And these richly talented entrepreneurs nominated tonight are none of them overnight successes. They are all seasoned business people who've had an instinct for an opportunity and business. They've risked their own reputation time and money to make their vision a reality. In this category, the nominee will have displayed exceptional vision and leadership in building a company from the ground up. The finalists for the 2017 Entrepreneur of the Year, Ivan and Lynette Saltzman. Founders, Diskem Pharmacies. Mustafa Njai, CEO, TAF Africa Homes. Maida Waziri, CEO, IBRA Africa. And the entrepreneur of the year. Entrepreneurs, actually, Yvonne and Lynette Salzman, founders, Diskem Pharmacies. Diskem is South Africa's second biggest retail chain of chemists by number of stores and specializes in beauty, health and health food, sports supplements and well-being in addition to pharmaceutical products. Founded in 1978 with as little as 10,000 Rand capital investment, Ivan and Lynette Saltzman opened their first pharmacy in the south of Johannesburg. 
But 30 years later, this empire has grown to over 100 stores with over 15 billion rand in turnover and listed on the JSC in 2016. Thank you for this recognition and award. It's very special and means a lot to us. The Diskim story for Lynette and I can be classified as a true entrepreneurial journey. We started as young pharmacists dreaming of our own pharmacy, which was made a reality in 1978. This has today grown into a listed company and, and one year later, is an entity worth some 30 billion rand on the JSE. With, with nearly 130 stores, three of which actually opened this morning. <laughs> this growth will, be con will continue to be mainly in South Africa, but we have started expanding into the SADC countries Three stores already exist in Namibia, with many more prospects in neighboring countries. There is no doubt that our best years will lie ahead of us. One of the many lessons we have learned from our journey, which should be heeded by all businesses, is perseverance and innovation. It's different for all businesses, but Arvin and myself didn't follow any textbooks or management or leadership staff we, to build this scheme. We just followed our instinct and we believe in market disruption. We did, however, listen very carefully to our customers and partners along the way, changing the face of pharmacy in this country. We built and developed this scheme by carefully considering what products and services customers wanted, what they were prepared to pay, how they wanted to shop, and adapting to the ever-changing environment. And in the earlier days, we wanted to bring affordable health care to the South African public. Uh, it must have been very difficult for the ABLA judging panel to select a winner from this year's formidable group of talented individuals, great business people, all of them. Let's take a look at the finalists for the 2017 All Africa Business Leader of the Year. Finalists for the 2017 Business Leader of the Year Khalid Abdullah, Group CEO, African Equity Empowerment Investments Herbert Wigwe, CEO, Access Bank Joshua Oigara, Group CEO, Kenya Commercial Bank Africa Business Leader Awards. Business Leader of the Year is Herbert Wigwe, CEO of Access Bank PLC. Dr. Herbert Wigwe is the Group Managing Director of Access Bank PLC. In 2002, Wigwe acquired Access Bank PLC, a small commercial bank. Today, Access Bank is one of the largest banks in Africa. Under Wigwe's leadership, Access Bank has since evolved from a small wholesale bank ranked 65th out of 69 in the industry into a top three diversified institution by profitability with a fast growing retail presence and an international network that spans three continents across the world. He is a recipient of many awards, which include Bank CEO of the Year, Thank you that this award is not purely as a result of my own uh, contribution only, but also as a result of the collective endeavor of each and every one of them, their will, their doggedness, their determination to basically place Access Bank as Africa's gateway to the world. The last couple of years have brought 
significant issues to the continent coming from the global economic downturn. And what this has done is that it has left several African countries in disarray, more specifically around the crash in commodity prices. As far as I'm concerned, this presents a rare opportunity for entrepreneurs in Africa to stand up and, as we say, take tomorrow, all right, to basically change the fortunes of our countries and, of course, our continent. Africa requires that we support small-scale businesses. It requires that we support starting businesses. It requires that we grow our institutions into global franchises. And so we support our countries and begin to teach our continent together. For me, at Access Bank, we have continued to do great things, and we are known and celebrated as torchbearers for very, very responsible businesses across the continent. And it is important that we all understand it and we come together to start pursuing such mantra as was mentioned by Mr. Wahi around interesting corporate social responsibility projects required to basically grow, grow the continent. On a personal basis, I think that all of these things don't amount to much if we don't start to work and change the narrative around the continent. For too long, the continent is principally described as one where there's so much poverty, there's so much hunger, there's so much sickness, disease, despots, all sorts of things. Nobody recognizes Africa for the beauty, the passion, the great entrepreneurial skills that reside within us. And until we start working together to change that narrative, we will not be able to get the much needed attention that is required to make the phenomenal growth that, require, that we require for us to basically take our continent to the next level. Congratulations. Thank you. The ABLAS has always been about recognizing leadership on the continent, not just individually, but also entire organizations. And here the judges looked at overall company achievements and excellence. They also looked at companies' successes, including growth, introduction of product innovations, a supportive employee culture, a focus on the customer, and demonstrated overall company excellence. The finalists for the 2017 Company of the Year Capitec Bank Holdings Limited GT Bank Chandaria Industries All Africa Business Leaders Awards Company of the Year is Capitec Bank. Capitec has doubled its customer numbers over the past five years and quadrupled in market value offering a single no-frills bank account with low fees among other disruptive products. The Stellenbosch-based bank, which launched in 2001, has over 9 million customers and opened its 800th branch in 2017. Premier talked about dreaming. Uh, when we started the bank in 2000, we actually set for the first six, seven months, all we worked on is a business plan. And the business plan wasn't so much about um, what do we want to achieve. Uh, it all went about the client and what the client wants. And I think uh, today what we've achieved is incredible. I think to have over 800 branches, to have nine and a half million clients um, and still acquiring about 100,000 per month, I think is a tremendous achievement. But I think the thing that we're the proudest of is uh, we've got 14,000 people that worked for us. When we started, we had none. Uh, <laughs> and we're still employing two, three, 4,000 people in the South African economy. <laughs> so coming back to the Premier, I think dream high, live your dreams, 
And when it comes to execution, the one thing I can just say to yourself is focus and go and implement your dream. Thank you very much. <clears throat>
that the Premier here has indicated that there are these opportunities that have arisen. And the great thing that needs to be done now it is to inspire, inspire our, our young people to create a new South Africa in which all of us, black and white, will join hands to build a great country, a great future. And this is what I am dreaming about, a great South Africa of the future, where we, some of us, will not be there, but our children and grandchildren will proudly walk in that, in that area. <laughs> and with these words, let me thank those that deemed it wise to grant me an award at this age, and I will value it and leave it to my children to insp get inspired, because with my grandson holding this award, I hope he works so hard that one day he gets a similar award. <laughs> I thank you very much for the privilege uh, and for the opportunity to be with you this evening. Thank you very much. So our most valued invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the All Africa Business Leader Awards, in partnership with CNBC Africa, I would like to extend a tremendous thank you to all the nominees and the winners. Thank you to our judges for their search for Africa's best, to our sponsors who have reached out across the continent, to our partners, thank you for yet another superb partnership, and to the team at AB in event productions. We also extend a sincere thank you and ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me tonight. I hope we had a good time. Let's go.